All right, well, welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor, all you minders out there. Hope you're having a great week. It has been a fun, fun week for me, getting started in this 30-30 uh, challenge, and we've gone through the first six days already. And man, I tell you, it's sweat shopping. It's fun sweat shopping, but it's sweat shopping. If there's any better way to learn, I don't know about it than to force yourself to do paintings every day drawings every day and I thought what would be fun is just to go through and show you the first six days and then I'm going to show you a little bit of footage uh, of me painting one of them and we'll just talk about some of the things that I wanted to accomplish in this um, challenge and some of the things that I have discovered so far six days in. So this was not posted as one of my regular pieces for the challenge, but it was a warm-up piece. Um, this, by the way, is a Fabriano Artistico paper, and uh, this was done, or this was bought online on eBay. Uh, I have posted this in the YouTube community section as to who sells these, so if you want to know, go look for that. I'll also post that again in this video when I'm done. But uh, a few days, two or three days prior to the challenge, I did this little sketch. And uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw it. Uh, and Facebook, uh, you saw it there as well. Just to kind of get in the frame of mind, warm up. So it's a really tiny. You can see, compared to my hands, how small it is. And kind of the theme I wanted to uh, adopt for myself in this daily challenge is dynamic light and shade and being able to capture that quickly. Um, it, it, it's a good goal, I think, when you're sketching directly. And, and sketching directly just means you just start painting. You know, you can sketch with watercolor. You do no pencil or very minimal pencil. And you do mostly just getting your paintbrush in there and painting. Uh, you can pre-sketch with the watercolor um, if you're sticking. I mean, you can do the challenge any way you want, but if you're sticking with uh, the spirit of the challenge, you can get in there and sketch with your watercolor, you know, like a fine point. I, I've been using a rigger or a fine point uh, water brush to do the pre-drawing. You'll see on my video how I incorporated that into one of the paintings. So this was from a photo. And I've done a number of photos. Only a few so far have been plein air on location uh, due to lots of things, time, uh, weather. Uh, but I am trying to get in as much plein air as I can. I won't talk about this one much. This was day one, and I did a whole video on this. And this was my kickoff video. You can just go back and look at that video. I was pleased with the way it turned out, but I wanted to force myself into some looser passages. And that, by the way, I've gotten some comments, just a few, but I've gotten some comments that uh, they don't want me to be worried about being looser or changing my style. Um, and I appreciate that. I appreciate that you like uh, the way I paint. Um, it's not about changing my style. I'm not planning on changing my style, but loosening up uh, really gives great benefits in being able to do that. It, it allows you to be more expressive even when you're tight. It allows you to uh, render, draw, and sketch quicker uh, when you're on location. If you're just wanting to get in a study, there's a lot of benefits to learning how to loosen up. And it doesn't all have to do with changing your style. You know, I'm not going to change my, my style necessarily to a super loose style. Um, it just improves your art. It helps you be more essential with your forms. Um, and, you know, the other advantages that I just mentioned. So, uh, thank you, but don't worry. Uh, you know, I'm not out to become a different person or appease some group. I think one commenter thought that I was out to, you know, appeal to a certain group and change what I was doing. Not it at all. This is a instructional goal that I have set for myself and have wanted to do for a long time and this challenge just fit perfect with that so just wanted to explain that so this was day two and I did this from a photo and I love this photo because uh, it had very dynamic cast shadows and I thought if I can just quickly loosely capture the essence of that I'm going to be very happy and 
I was happy with most of it. I think there are some areas that I fiddled with too much. You know, the faces are a little bit forced, but I really didn't focus on the faces at all. It was a sunny day, and I wanted to get these neat cast shadows, and I wanted to be able to do that quickly. And for the most part, I'm pretty happy. And I just love the composition. I, I had intended for this to be kind of up a little bit, but you know, when you're direct watercolor and you're not pre-drawing this thing uh, out, you can't really edit your pencil and then, you know, move the whole thing up or if you're transferring it. So I got this composition a little lower in here, but you know, for its sketch, and composition it really doesn't work all that bad. And her attention was on this uh, woman carving this as a ham. Uh, and so you kind of got this flow of your vision and I thought that was nice. All right, so day three, I went to this bigger book. This is a handmade book that was given to me by one of my viewers, Michelle Heron. And this is day three. I was really pleased this time uh, that I focused on abbreviating all this foliage. And really that, uh, I have painted that way in several paintings before but sometimes you know the detail gene kicks in I just like the the freshness and it was especially helpful here because the detail went into this shed that's my neighbor's shed and it's a pretty rough shape they really ought to bulldoze it because I did put a little bit of detail in there having all of the rest of this be a little more impressionistic uh, really helped I think the composition in the end, I did fiddle with this detail a little too much, but um, all in all, I think it worked out. And again, keeping with my theme of dynamic light and shadow, this was casting in late afternoon a nice shadow here on this building. And shadows creeping across the yard from a tree off to the left. And uh, I really like that. And that just kind of points your eye that way too. So that was day three. Now back to this book, the day four, let's see, day four, I just tried to change up my pace a little bit, I actually have a photo, I think I've got it right here, this is an elk sketch, and I've actually been studying, doing study sketches of these guys for a month or so, not far, too far from us in the Catalucha Valley, which is in Smoky Mountain, Smoky Mountains National Park, uh, they reintroduced elk 18 years ago, 17 years ago, and the herd is growing, and there's a, it's a very remote valley. It's hard to get to, but it's really neat. We were there uh, back in the fall, and I took some pictures and some video. So I wanted to do a painting of these elk. Late afternoon, dynamic shadows, only in a few places, but uh, I had fun rendering that. Just treated the the woods behind it sort of impressionistically so as not to detract from the detail of this guy. This was actually one of the smaller bulls that was in the area and he kind of uh, left and we came through this meadow a couple times. There was a huge bull when we came back, bull elk. I mean when he turned his head sideways the horns reached back over halfway over his back. So this was a young guy. So that was day four. Day five, this was quick, uh, not intended to be. I wasn't looking for something to do super fast. I actually had planned to spend afternoon doing plein air, but I went out to our lakeside park where I've done a little bit of sketching before. And man, the clouds, so dynamic, so dynamic. I As I looked around for things to sketch, I kept looking up at the clouds. I thought, well, that's got to be it. You know, there's some nice distant mountains you can see uh, from that park. And I thought, we'll just add a little bit of lakeside scenery here, but mostly feature these clouds. Just a lot of uh, mix of wet and wet and just some dry. I just kind of added water in places and let it bleed in places and let it uh, dry to a harder edge in places. And it ended up beginning to rain when I was at this park. So this, uh, I had to cut it short. So being able to render those clouds was, was really uh, a good choice. And this was one of only a few, only three so far. 
Um, actually, I'm working ahead by a couple days because we're going out of town on the weekend. So this is one of only three so far that I've done at, uh, in real plein air, not from a photo. So that was day five. And day six, back to this bigger sketchbook, was this guy. Um, just a change of pace. I actually did this at night in the evening and uh, wanted to do a portrait. I did a, had a false start on this. Uh, I really lost control of this. I mean, this isn't terrible as, a, as just a rough sketch. But I got his nose wrong. These shadows all started looking too dead and gray. And I, th I really wanted to do a little more of an impressionistic face. I wanted to get more color in the grays and in the shadows. And so uh, I just stopped before I got too far on that one. And then did this, which I was much happier with. And I haven't even posted this to Sketchy yet, but I need to do that pretty soon. So that brings us up to the current day as I record this. So here will be some a speed video of this one. And I'll have some comments as you watch that. All right, so starting out, uh, this is how I did sketching on pretty much all of them. Um, I used either a rigger, and this is a rigger. Uh, at the moment, I can't remember which one, but I'll figure it out. And just a very light, watery mixture of paint. Uh, for those of you who are illustrators and know the technique of using uh, light gray markers to rough in, this is very similar. Uh, you know, you can't erase, but it's so light that it covers easily. So it's a pretty good way to sketch with a brush. And I didn't need to do a lot of sketching here. I, I you know, basically just need, needed to map out where things were going to be. And I wanted the building to pop out, and I wanted that tree to pop out. So, uh, just modeling values was the key challenge here. This is my expanded palette from uh, my the new colors that I used on my micro palette. So there's Quin Gold, there's uh, Appetite Green, there's Viridian, there's a bit of Turquoise now and then dabbed in, a bit of Quinacridone Rust, just letting all those sort of greens and earth tones mingle around. And right now I'm, I'm, I'm just working mainly on the wet and wet, although I'm trying to establish an edge on that foreground tree or that middle tree so that that is mostly dried it's not completely dried but blocking in all the rest of the background just try to keep this foliage very very simple and as I said earlier in this video you know this was an important aspect for me to practice during this 30-day challenge because it's a skill that just helps you to simplify when you're sketching um, whether or not you intend to be a loose painter is not the issue or not the point you know i've often said that loose painters or painters that just paint loose ought to paint tightly from time to time because it will help them be better loose painters and conversely People who paint tight all the time ought to paint loosely from time to time because it'll help their tight painter their tight paintings be better. There's just some cross pollination there that really develops your art that is is very important. I got a little fiddly with that barn and. You know, some of the shadows, especially on the roof, ended up not looking as fresh as earlier in the painting. So I kind of wished I had backed off on that. But for the most part, I think I was pretty happy. And here we're just using some gel pen at the end to add a few details. There was a fence line back there. So popping that in and...
Sometimes I'll add detail on the edges of foliage just to help with the scale. It's not a matter of getting at detail, it's just to make sure your eye understands that the scale is, is realistic to the scene. And this is like the final touch. I, I kind of obliterated the little block that was part of the foundation of that building, so I put it back in with gel pen. And I'll just glaze over that with some brown. So it's a handy way. This jelly roll gel pen is permanent. It's not water soluble. So once you let it dry, then you can put a little watercolor glaze over that, which I'm doing right now. It's a little a brick foundation corner to that building. A number of you out there are, are participating in this challenge. Um, it's so great to see. Actually, far more than I ever thought. Uh, who are watchers of my channel, so it's just really cool. So many that I can't, you know, post comments on all of them, but I'm I'm seeing quite a few, and um, I'm so glad to see it. Here's the finished piece, a little closer up. Thank you everybody for watching. Thank you so much, patrons. You will get some bonus video on Patreon of some of my uh, daily paintings from the challenge. So look for, there's nothing posted yet from the challenge on Patreon, but look for it really soon. Thank you. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.